Module 8. This is the Master's Certificate in Technical Analysis course. We've now got to Module 8, which is concerned with further charting methods. This is built on Module 2, where we mentioned a fair amount on bar charting and candlestick charting, and here we're introducing other ways that you can look at the figures. So Module 8, Part 1. This is video number 1 from Module 8, and we'll be talking about candlestick charting and this is perhaps the main part of the module. Candlestick charting has taken over for lots of people from conventional types of bar charting and other types of charting, so we'll spend most of the module time on candlestick charting. So just a few basic facts to start with. Candlestick charting has been used for centuries in Japan. I think it was around 1870, or perhaps even earlier than that actually. It was developed by a rice trader who used it used it to make lots of trades and make lots of money for himself. It has been used in Japan for a very long time, but for some curious reason no one in the West ever came across it until Steve Neeson came across it in the 1980s, and he actually wrote a book which went into candlestick trading and was around the end of the 80s or 1990. He was the first person in the West to introduce it, but a few people pe but, but uh, uh, but a few people have picked it up since then. One of the first people to pick it up was Greg Morris who has also written some books on candlestick charting. Now as candlestick charting we did cover this originally on module 2 but basically it's just a way of looking at the price data which is a little bit pl plainer than old-fashioned western bar charts. The western bar chart you have here on the left side uh, and they have little ticks, like little horizontal lines to show where the opening and closing prices are. And the length of the vertical bar goes from the lowest price traded to the highest price traded, probably for a day in this case. And this uh, is up to a day, uh, is an up day and a down day. In the down day, we open higher than the close. In the up day, when we open lower than the close. Now those figures can go across to the candlestick chart the candlestick is so cool because obviously it looks somewhat like a candlestick with wicks on each end and if it's an up day where the open is lower than a close traditionally you'll have a white candle that fat section is called the body and the top and bottom are called wicks or shadows those single lines going up and down to the extremes now if we look at a down day it is a black body because it's opened higher than the close that's a down day. Now you can choose what colours you want. Sometimes you have green for the up day and red for the down day. It's your choice of course and you can just leave it to the default colours as long as you know what the colours mean. So the length of the body shows how strong the price has been moving during the day. So it's an indication of strength and the wicks or the shadows tend to indicate the amount of volatility there's been in the price, how far out it's traded uh, and that's an indication of the activity the level of activity plus the volatility and how far people are willing to take it. So let's look at a specific type of candles. They, they don't look quite like the same candles that's because they're called doji lines and doji line the real body is shrunk right down into a single line. The opening and close prices are the same. It traded all the way up and down between those wicks during the day but it finished back where it started. And dojis are especially significant in its candlestick charting because basically it's indecision. They fought long and hard all the way long in making the price change and it came back down to the same point in which it opened. Neither the buyers nor the sellers won, so quite often they are the first indication of a reversal on their own. Basically they say no one has won control of the market for that day. The doji on the left is called a long-legged doji because the wicks are long up and down, so that indicates a lot of fighting between the buyers and sellers, with no one winning in the end. The fourth doji, you can see the cursor with the line of the real body at the top. That's called a dragonfly doji, and that means again that there's indecision. So you can see that there may be a reversal, but it tends to be a bullish signal. So if you're in a downtrend, this is a li little bit m more likely to be a reversal to an uptrend. The one after that is called a gravestone doji, the one on the right. 
For obvious reasons, it just looks like a gravestone sticking up out of the ground. And that tends to be a bearish doji. Again, doji can reverse trends in either direction. But again, the dragonfly with the bottom at the top tends to be a bullish, and the gravestone with the body at the bottom tends to be a bearish. Going on from that, the next progression would be spinning tops. So cool, because they're so small that they've got small bodies. It's just a progression on from the doji. It's just a little bit more certainty on the market, but not much. These are still very indecisive kinds of candlesticks, and perhaps I should say, with the doji, you may not get the opening and closing prices exactly the same. You might have a small body, but you are still regarded as a doji, as long as it's a very small body. Basically, the sort of pattern, this sort of pattern means that any trend may be losing steam. It's just not making any headway. At the end of the day, it comes back. That's a very extreme example of spinning bodies, where they have very short bodies and long wicks, and this is called the high wave. It's just another type of spinning top, and again, it shows a great deal of indecision. Of course, on the other hand, we have the long bodies. The long white line, the long black line, these are called. And basically, that's strong. The one on the left, a bullish candle. It shows that the bulls kept pushing the price up until it closed a lot higher than it opened at the beginning of the day. So that would suggest that the bulls are winning, and it's a trend upwards, and there are, and they won on the right, long black line, and the bears are winning. They're forcing the price down during the day. When you look at the length of these bodies, you tend to be looking at the length of the outer candlesticks on previous days to see whether this qualifies as long. Long is relative, of course, if the security trades typically in long bodies, then these might not be much long. You need to see that they are much longer than the normal trading lengths. One other thing that you can get with these candlesticks is when you don't have a wick or shadow. And that's easy to see why. You look at one on the left, for example, and it's an up day. It opens way up there. It trades around and goes to that low point. But the high is the same as the closing point and therefore there is no wick or shadow pushing up above it. And the down day next is similar idea. It opens at the, at the top, but that's the highest price has been all day. It will go down to the low, and then it will come up a little bit for the close. You can see the same with the one on the right that's called shaven head and shaven bottom. It's called that because it looks like the wick has been shaven off it. So that's one you can look out for also. If it has a shaven head and a shaven body, then that's got a special name for itself. It's called a marabuzo candle. A marabuzo candle is just a real body without any wicks sticking out of it. Now we look at some reversal signals. We look at the signal singles first. Now mostly reversals are specific to the direction of the trend. In the case of the doji, not necessarily so, but most of the patterns we look at are specific to the direction of the trend to make a reversal. First one we look at, they're very similar, but depend what trend they're in. The one on the left is called a hammer, because it looks like a hammer, of course. And the one on the right is called a hanging man. And I've got the bodies in grey, because they can be black or white. They need to be fairly short bodies. In fact, they are dragonfly doges with short bodies. And these are reversal signals that you can look for. In fact, they're quite good reversal signals. And you can also get the other variety, where the real body is down the bottom of the signals, and the one on the left is called the inverted hammer, and the one on the right is called the shooting star, because it looks like a long tail coming down from the body. So those again are a reversal signal. They are similar to the gravestone doji, but with a little bit of a body, so obviously not quite as powerful as an indecision as having a doji, but they're still looked for and very common. Now, to take a different attitude, we've had indecision on the doji, and those are the signals by the fact that the close close is, finish up, is finished up near the open. These reversal signals have got strong bodies. This means that they've overcome the strength of the trend. So if we look at the one on the left, it's called a bullish belt hold. Still, Steve ne Neeson adopted the name belt hold. It's not a Japanese name. It's a bullish belt hold, and basically a gap down to the open, which is at the bottom. But then, all day long, the price kept pushing up. 
So the theory is is that it gapped down to look and it looked strong, but as it never went to any further down and started creeping up, quite possibly the people who've got a short position decided they want to they better buy for cover of cover on their position, and that pushes the thing further up. So this is a strong candle on the whole, on the whole, and a rather indecisive candle. The one on the right is a bearish belt hold that opens gapped up higher. That's as high as it gets on the top at that one, but then it declines all the way, and traders see it coming down and say, hey, we, we better close down or our long positions because this price is sinking down, and we'll be losing money if we don't close out. And because they close out their long position, that tends to make the body come down further. It's rather self-fulfilling. Moving on now to two candle reversals, here's a strong one. These are engulfing candles. Now we can see the downtrend on the left. We have a downtrend candle, but only a short one. It's got a hold on. Uh, it's got a hold or an uh, an effect on it, and then the next day opens lower still, so it gets gapped down. But all day long the price gets pushed up and that finishes up with the white candle engulfing the black candle. That is, for the white candle, the length of the body is lower down than the body of the black candle and it's higher up than the top of the black candle. And that's the engulfing candle. You don't have to engulf the wicks of the pattern, it's just one body engulfing the other. And basically it's just showing you a lot of strength after a fairly weak day showing a lot of strength going in the other direction. We look at the right where we have an uptrend. We have a short uptrend candle, but then we have a long downtrend candle, again engulfing the previous one. Again, another indication for this, for strength of the engulfing signal, just to look for the volume on that long candle day. We're looking for a lot of volume to say that there are a lot of people supporting this change in the value of the trend. A slight variation here where we have a longer first candle. The one on the left is called a longer piercing line, and that's a bullish signal. Again, we have a bearish black candle, a gap down to open on the second day, and certainly some wicks can go up and down here, but it finishes strongly during the day and finishes up. And I think that the guideline here is that the close of the second day should be more than halfway up that the length of the body of the first candle. The one on the right, the bearish sign, is called the dark cloud cover. They have some picturesque names taken from the Japanese, and again the idea is that it shows a lot of strength to push it to the reverse and taking it for the in the reverse. And taking it further, we still now go on to the short candles on the second day, but these still but these are still recognized, very well recognized reversal signals. These are Haramis. The one on the right is a bullish Harami, a reversing downtrend to a bullish trend. And the one on the right is a bearish one, and Haramis is Japanese for pregnant, because they basically think that the first candle looks like a baby, and the second candle is like a baby bulge. So on this one, to see whether it's a good signal, you look for the volume of the second day, but you look for a low volume on the second day than this. And then we have another variety, where those second days become jo dojis, and that makes it an even stronger reversal signal. It's basically you see an indecision on the second day. That's a faltering market. On the second day where it really can't carry on with its downtrend or its uptrend, where it just got the effort behind it just hasn't not got the effort behind it. Therefore you see in the faltering and you and you would be looking for it to go into the other direction on the next day for some kind of confirmation. Moving on now to some three three candle patterns on the left we have a morning star and the, on the right we have an evening star. It's, even, it's easy to understand the name from one of the, the right the middle candle looks like a star stuck up there above the other two and those star and those stars can be either color they just have to be short or they have to be above the real bodies too or below the real bodies of the surrounding candles some people don't even want to a gap 
to the third candle to call it an evening star or a morning star. Again, those are reversals, and you can get doji stars, and you can get morning doji star and evening doji star, which is basically gets to a doji in a trend, and then the third one comes back. The extreme of the doji stars is called an abandoned baby. The one on the left is the bull bullish abandoned baby, and the one on the right is the bearish abandoned baby and the abandoned baby is a doji, a doji star pattern but the star is totally away from the two surrounding card and candles not even the wicks are at the same level so as you can see look on the right it's truly a star up in the heavens and there's a gap before we even get down to the wicks of the, the candles on the uh, on the left and right candles there are quite a few other reversal cat patterns. These are stronger ones. Obviously, these aren't guaranteed, and you have to look for other signs that are going to be reversals. Given other signs, you may find that some of these strong patterns may work 80% of the time, and the weakened patterns may only work 60% of the time, so it's really just a percentage game. You can also use candles for continuation signals. This is to assure you that you're in the right position. You don't have to close out your position, for instance. One of the popular ones there is the rising three candle and the falling three pattern. Oh, sorry, the rising three and the falling three pattern. Rising three pattern is the one on the left. It's a rising uptrend, and you can sometimes find that the market takes a break. It's opened up higher than the first candle, but gradually it comes back down. These are short bodies. There's no real strength here, and the market comes back down to a bearish way. It's a stronger signal, actually, if there were three bearish black candles, but there was no time for those three black candles going down to go below the body of the first candlestick. And then by the time we get to the fifth candle, it opens higher than the previous day, and closing is also higher than the first day, then the, those are the criteria to make this the rising three, and the falling three has the same sort of idea. So those are some of the patterns. Actually, there are 100 named patterns, so obviously I haven't got time to show you all of them. But there, those, those are the ones that you encounter most commonly. I don't think anyone actually re really remembers all those patterns, except perhaps Steve Neeson, because basically it's his job. So here are the principles you have to bear in mind in candlestick charting. Let's go through these, but be sure you use other Western charting analysis. You're always going to have to something to confirm candlestick pattern. And it's meaning you cannot trade on, on the pattern alone. I don't know of a case where you can trade just on, on the candlesticks. The second one is obvious, really. The more agreement you have between the patterns, the candlestick, and whatever else you're doing, the more likely you are to have a reversal. And this is something I mentioned in the text. You can pre-qualify your charts. You can put an oscillator along the bottom and only look for a reversal of an uptrend. And then you have an indication that there should be a reversal from your oscillator. When your oscillator is at an extreme, if your oscillator is in the middle, then don't bother even looking at the candle pattern or even considering whether to trade it. And that way you can eliminate some of the patterns that aren't going to make you so much money or aren't worth looking at at all. Candle line shows the force behind each move as well as the price yesterday. The length of the body can show the force. If the length is short, then it's a hesitant market. If the length is long, then it's a strong market. Candlestick patterns require both the shape and the correct trend. Yes, as I said in the beginning, if for a pattern to make sense is a reversal, it has to be in a trend. So don't just look for the pattern randomly. Look for where it's in the correct trend, and the reversal will be to have more of an effect. I've covered the next one. Pattern alone is not just a justification for a new trade. Never trade just on the basis of seeing a pattern. Next one, if a doji sets new highs then wait for a bearish confirmation by close under the doji that's just to say it right you think the doji may be a reversal signal but it may not be so you have to look for the next candle to see if the reversal is happening and then you can pull in your trade there's an interesting one next candlesticks do not give price targets there's no way you can get a price from a candle. So you can use other technical analysis to, or other forms of technical analysis to see where you think the price may go. 
And the final one, set stop lo le loss levels by other means, i.e. by technical analysis to know where you're going wrong and must exit the trade. That applies in general and not just to the candlestick chart in generally. Whenever you set up a trade, you must know where you'll exit. If you're wrong and there's no problem being wrong, trading is a percentage game. So you'll make wrong trades and you've got to get to get out of them quickly and minimize your losses. And then your gains will far outweigh your losses. So that's candlestick charting. And module two is next and we'll look at point and figure charting. It's it's also we'll look at some other charting methods which you might be interested in but they're not widely used but they all have something to tell you about price action so I look forward to talking to you again in the next part module 8 part 2 back in the te at the technical analysis the, the uh, technical analysis module 8 the further charting model which builds on what you learned in module 2 and this is the second video, or the second part of the video for Module 8. And the first video dealt with candlestick charting, which is really one of those things you'll probably use most of the time. But in this part, we'll look at other types of chart. I would say right now, all of these methods require the prices to be in a trend. Now sometimes the prices are trendless or going sideways, range trading, whatever you want to call it, and that be at most 40% of the time. But all these charting methods really are to follow trends in order to give you correct directions for your trading. Now with that preservation, we'll look at other types of trade charts. The first one we'll look at is point and figure. Point and figure charting is uh, one that's one that's the other major chart. It's it's one that's been used for many years, in fact. It's used by major it's it's seen as a major analytical tool before we before we literally started to develop and use candlesticks more. In fact, it's different in certain ways, such as in the time and scale is not uniform. It all depends on price action, how far across the chart it gets plotted. So that's one thing you have to bear in mind compared with all the other charts you've looked at until now. Again, the other thing is that it does not actually tell you directly about volume. Again, I've said that volume is one thing that's important. It reinforces your decision on trading, and you can kind of assume and get some volume from point and figure, but it's not set up to directly tell you about volume. So straight into the point and figure chart, here's one. Actually, because it's so tall, some of the bottom of it has actually been cut off, but it's the same chart as the one on the right of it as we've actually looking at the other charts and this has actually been done on a one box on a one box reversal now each one of these you look carefully not those black things are row, rows of x's and those vertical ones are rows or zeros and the zeros go down the downtrend and the x's go up and originally these were done with boxes on graph paper so therefore these are called boxes each time one of these characters is drawn now this is one of th this is a most detailed chart you can have it's based on a one box reversal just one movement which is in this case i think it is a penny reversal in this one you can have more than one box reversal now if you look over here there's a single x you'll only see that when there's a one box reversal you won't see that on other charts where you'll have a different number for reversals but commonly what we have is a one box reversal a three box reversal or a five box reversal and it's a way of adjusting the sensitivity of that reversal now with a one box reversal you'll get a lot of action going up and down which may not suit you if you don't want to get st st stopped out on f on forced signals you may choose to trade on a three or five box reversal but we'll talk more about that and what that means firstly this chart looks at the daily low or high prices it's high and low price action is what you look at here basically what happens is if you're in an uptrend if you're in X's you'll look at the high price for the day if the high price is higher then you'll draw some more X's up to the price for that day and that's it 
if the price is not higher then you have to then you have to look and see if this is a reversal so what you do is look at the low price for the day and see if it's lower than the x you've got then you draw a zero so let's just look perhaps at this one we don't know how many days this took but I see June has quite a space there but the X's went up until the X's didn't get any higher and then you say right there's no reason to draw an X on this day now can we draw a zero and in this case they did draw a zero what they did was move across to the right move down a box because obviously the price is lower and then you draw a zero down to the current low price and then you're in a downtrend and this then therefore after that every day you look at the low price for the day and see whether you can extend that row of zeros uh, further and then you don't do anything unless you have a high price that requires you to go across and draw an X or further zero or further zeros that go below the current zeros so I don't imagine you'll be drawing this by hand but that's the principle and your charting software will do this for you as they say you should look at the box reversal whether it's one three or five now if it's a five box reversal if you're in an uptrend uptrend doesn't have any high prices you'll need the low price to be at least five boxes lower before you can step across and draw down so it stops you changing your direction too often when you have high prices and therefore you just identify the major trends now when you want to trade on this you look for a column that goes at least one box higher than the previous one so let's just have a look at that and these are a couple of patterns but really they just encapsulate um, what I've just said on the left you have an uptrend you have the X's and at some stage the price when you go down a bit as it does you get higher highs and higher lows in an uptrend so it's down and you drew the zero there and then you had another reversal back in the trend and drew the X's in the third column now you see the top X is on the high on is one higher than the X column to the left of it and that is your signature trade it's a breakout in the terms of point and figure it's kind of like your support of resistance lines if you remember well, well horizontal they don't didn't follow that trend lines follow in an angle they didn't that that didn't do that support and resistance are horizontal what we're doing here is locating whether there's a breakout from that horizontal level and when we tra and and then we trade that and on the right you can see there's a bearish trend and you sell because there's a break with break out downwards in that one you can also draw something they're called trend lines and they're not actually the same as trend lines but they're trend lines in point and figure terms and they're always at 45 degrees which makes it kind of easy because you have a varying time scale along the bottom you can't necessarily draw at a set angle between the low points and expect them all to connect so what they do is say right we'll draw at 45 degrees we go from the lowest one in this case they'll draw at the zeros bottom at the zero column and go up 45 degrees because it's basically an uptrend now we can find at this particular graph that trend line doesn't do a lot of good because it's a long way from the other low point so what you can do is redraw it by picking another column of zeros to draw it from the bottom for example it might have worked it looks as though if you had drawn it through there it would have broken through it basically you can draw a trend line at 45 degrees but a bit closer to the other low points so it gives you a better idea of where the price is going to reverse and back up rever to reverse its trend so that's point and figure charting a lot of people use that but that's much any but much uh, but that but uh, basically sorry that's uh, basically all you, all you need to know uh, to get started in point and figure now we we'll look more at charts and the candle volume chart this is a candlestick chart fundamentally but again because of the way it's constructed it distorts the time scale at the bottom you don't have to even space of times you don't have an even space of time scale at the bottom what the candle volume chart does is showing the price action going up and down on the candles 
as it does with the real body or the wicks going up and down, but it also shows the volume action going up horizontally. You'll see what I mean. Here's a candle volume chart going against the part of the chart we've been looking at because the time scale is distorted. It doesn't actually go back to the beginning of the one we've here we've been looking at. Now if you look at some of these candles are fatter than the others. The fat candles have had a lot of volume on that day. So these are daily candles but they're drawn with the addition of width which indicates the volume. And if you look here around February there are some bearish candles that are fat which are us unusual because usual, usually the volume goes down a bit as the volume goes down. Up here we, ha we see there's a bit of retracement up here but these candles are very skinny there's hardly any volume pushing them up so that's not surprising that the downtrend resumes. So it's a way to see even more clearly not only the price action but also the volume action. The, the, the only downtrend is again you can't use the techniques of drawing straight trend lines and expect it to connect all to the low points because of the time scale distorted. But again it's one you can look at from time to time. Next way of plotting is the way we're looking at is the three line break and this is another one where the drawing is driven by the price action. You only draw if you have something to say. You only draw if something changes. And so you have time scale that's distorted. That is just based on closing prices because that's all it can show. As you can see, this is just boxes drawn corner to corner. Black boxes for an uptrend and red boxes for a downtrend. The way it's set up on share, sco on share scope that I'm using here, and what happens is, is here a higher price and an uptrend, you're set up to the right and draw up to the highest price. And again, when you get a higher price, you step up to the right and draw to the next higher price and keep doing that until you get to the higher prices. Now the condition for a reversal to make it into a red downtrend is that the real price must be lower than the third previous line. So if you look at the red one here, it happened because the price plotted there is lower than the third black line. And therefore it becomes a downtrend and you plot it down in red. Therefore you keep looking at the price and if it doesn't do a reversal by three black lines, then you don't draw anything unless it goes down for more. As we go down, we're stepping down here as we go lo go for lower prices and lower prices and perhaps stay there for a few days, not hitting lower prices, but at some stage it come up above the third previous line there, which is there, and that is the price we plotted for the day, and so it becomes an uptrend again, and when it changes color, that's the signal for the trade. Basically, one of the problems for this is that you just have to beat the third previous line and that means quite a reversal before you get to trading signal and therefore you miss the beginning of the reversal but this is a very obvious way of getting trading signals. You have a long stop loss on it because your stop loss is probably the bottom that the first block that you draw. So you could lose a bit but it reverses back again you could lose some more. But it's a method some people use. Another one, similar sort of thing again, another one is Renko. Now Renko is like the three line break, it's based on closing prices and it requires a definitive reversal. Here's a Renko chart, again it's drawn by charting software. It's all very straightforward and again you can see these are eight fully spaced blocks. You don't have a, night, a long block as you did with the three line break, break and you can choose a reasonable sized interval. Now it, it now it reverses on every interval but only the whole interval. So say we're at 240 and if the price goes to 242 and these are just closing prices you don't plot anything else. It's only when it goes up to 245 or above when, when you step up to the right and plot that extra block up to 245. And then again if it goes to 247 or comes back down to 242 you don't do anything. But one day, then it goes up to 250 here, or 252, or then you plot that block to 250. The reversal, because you have to actually draw a reversal block, you have to actually draw two of those price increments. So if you 
gone to 250 here you couldn't draw that red block until you've gone down to 240 that's two times that that two times a five as it is said and that's a reversal signal and again you can trade this is really you can trade this is really like looking at an ordinary price chart but just put it in lumps if you like you can look at a line chart but this is put in five 5p or 5 cent lumps rather than being continuous it's almost it, it it's almost like that when the li when the line goes up you say you're in uh, an uptrend and you buy when the line goes up and down when you sell so it's the same sort of idea but you see it gives you lumps so it gives you a more of a definitive signal it's the idea of trading off just following price action but that's a logarithmic action but Renko is again you're looking at a very straightforward chart in te charting technique clear signals for trading but it has to be trending again you can see sideways it won't work but you'll you'll just waste your money but if it's trending then this will give you clear signals now another charting method we're looking at is Kagi I think you know how that's pronounced or even Kagi but we prefer Kagi this one uses lines not blocks it's a very simple similar idea it needs trending charts or trending markets we draw lines of different thicknesses it's a thick line for an uptrend and it's a thin line for a downtrend in this case they have to they also do the downtrend in red in this charting software but basically we tell the trend from the thickness of the line now in this case we're just simply plotting prices again we have horizontal connectors so this is an ordinary uptrend it goes up to 250 or something and the next price is down to 220 so we go down to 220 and across and the next price is up so we go up and up and down and up and down higher highs and higher lows that's an uptrend now when do we change to a downtrend we change to a downtrend when the price is below the previous low point as you can see here in the middle as soon as we get to the 270 the line carries on down to 240 but after 270 something in it changes to a thin line which denotes a downtrend in this case actually we've got an uptrend again very quickly because it got up before 280 whatever that was, the, was that was the previous high so that made it an uptrend again and we carried on with an uptrend but here we have a longer downtrend where we kept on going down but then we got above the previous high it became an uptrend and connects across the next line comes back down so again unless we have a reason to plot we don't plot the time scale is varied but again this is a very clear indication as soon as you change the line thickness that's an indication to trade it tells you to trade the trade is the trend is on so that's another one of the same sort of theme is going as going in blocks so that you trade after there's been some trending rather than as soon as the direction trade changes and let's go through here there, there's there's just a taste there is coming up in module 10 this is cool, called um, Ikimoku technique which is called cloud charting by Western traders in fact you can see some clouds some blue clouds and some purple clouds here actually the Japanese word for cloud is Kumo which uh, those are called and then this is a Japanese technique and it's a very recent to the West it's more recent than candlestick charting and it's just becoming very popular there are actually five indicators here and we'll be going through it in detail in module 10 it, and it's very interesting technique and obviously the more the new techniques we look at the better we get so I'm going forward to module 10 and to explain how cloud charting work it's not as hard as it looks a lot of it has to do with variation and moving average and of course moving averages we're very, we're very comfortable with so we'll come to that but in between we'll have to do module 9 and module 9 we're going to be looking at cycles in trading the Elliott wave theory and uh, if you've come across that at all that's very much about cycles about prices going up and down and this is the way it works 
time cycles as such. So in module nine, we're coming across Elliott wave and time scales, and in mod and and uh, um, there's a change from what we've predicted in the earlier modules from what we have in the index in the earlier modules. So module 10 will be about uh, Ikimoku uh, technique or cloud charting as it's called. So I'm looking forward to doing that and I'm looking forward to talking to you about them. Okay, see you later.